Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again and today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my league start build for 3.8 Blight League aka the Tower Defense League uh, and we're going to be going ahead and starting with Icicle Mine as our league starter. Now unlike the previous leagues where I created multiple guild build guides, this time I'll just be focusing on one primary build guide so I can really help you guys and as I continue to play this character you will see probably either every 12 hours an update or daily updates for like the next week um, until I find myself satisfied. So with that being said, I wanna go ahead and show you what the mine looks like that we're gonna be using. So this is Icicle Mine. Looks kinda of underwhelming, which is what I want because I don't want something that clutters the screen. That's Storm Blast Mine, which we'll be using to level. And that's Pyroclast Mine, which will be our single target until the build does enough damage that it doesn't really need it. You also will have these new things called skitter bots that you can see moving around, which can automatically detonate your mines for you, I think as seen here. I don't know if I'm gonna use that or not. It seems like really nice quality of life, but it's 35% reservation on your mana, which is a really big hit. But you know, we really gotta just play around and kind of see what it's like, because it's just hard to tell from right now. So with that being said, I'm gonna just close out of this right before I show you. The, um, the reason why I say Stormblast Mine to level is because you get Stormblast Mine at level 1 and you get Icicle Mine at level 12. Sometimes projectile based spells, let's call that with Icicle Mine, don't feel as good until there's more density or until you get some type of modifier on them like Pierce Fork Chain. Whereas AoE is usually e really easy right off the bat. You can tell I just need AoE to scale it. Um, so we'll see which one we're actually leveling with right away. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and bring us to our next thing. We are playing an evasion type character. If you guys didn't know, in 3.8, which is the, well, sorry, not 3.8, but basically, monster accuracy has been lowered as 3.7's accuracy slash evasion calculation changed uh, in monsters being noticeably more likely to hit a character. So, TLDR, if you're playing an evasion build, you're getting buffed in this patch. So, that's also pretty cool. Uh, one other thing to note is we will be using a tremor rod. Isn't this in here? Hold on, where's the unique item balance? I think it's in here. Or is it... Oh, whoops, this is not the right one. Anyway, basically, Tremor Rod is getting a huge buff, you can look it up, where it doesn't have the reduced damage penalty anymore, so it's definitely a really solid option for us to use, but it doesn't mean we have to use it as a, like, you know, the only thing. So anyway, uh, let me go ahead and get started with this because I do my path of building a little bit differently than most. I'm an old school guy. I don't really like plugging in all the items, but I have done a little bit for you. So um, to get started with the level 1 to 11, I have done a simple every 10 levels build tree for you guys. We're going to be playing as a saboteur. I think you can also play it as a dead eye. I'm a simple person. I see saboteur synergizes well with mines. I'm interested in playing it. So. The reason why we're also going Sevator, even though Pyromaniac was mega nerfed, it's still a really nice quality of life because it gives the immunity to shock, the immunity to ignite, and with Dream Fragments, you get immunity to freeze and chill, which means you don't ever have to worry about ailments, aside from like poison and shit. You don't have to worry about elemental ailments, which is really, really nice, especially if you plan on bossing later or doing some type of bossing. Being able to not be slowed like that aside from various things, it's very, very nice in my opinion. It helps really get a good understanding of damage because you're never getting shocked. Also, if you don't know, uh, mines are now grenades and they basically have aura scaling. So we get a new mechanic that we get to play around called Demolition Specialist, where basically you get increased effect of auras. Icicle Mine is crit, so it scales its own crit. Pyroclasm Mine is flat fire damage, so mainly for single target. And then the Storm Blast Mine is just a flat out multiplier of damage dealt, which I don't really know how it's gonna work because I think it might be a little low for bosses. Um, not, not the increase, but the damage on the base mine itself, but should be great for clearing. But anyway, we'll, you know, we'll get into that as we play. It also gives us Hinder, which is cool because I usually like to run Blasphemy Temp Chains on mine builds and trap builds, but this is basically giving Temp Chains. So I'm pretty curious on how that works. If we don't like Demolition Specialist, We'll just go Explosive Expert because it's got great synergy as well. All you need to do, for example, is get one flat fire. You can now ignite uh, enemies. We're playing a cold build, so we will always have the penetration on chill. And to shock targets, you literally just get a tiny bit of lightning, uh, which you can get on shaped items. Other than that, you're going to be going probably Pyromaniac into Bomb Specialist Demolition and then Born to Shadows. So here's the standard 1 to 11. Then you can see 11 to 21, we're basically rushing volatile mines. 
uh, since volatile mines basically, in, oopsies, volatile mines increase damage taken on enemies and also have increased detonation speed. It seems like basically the best cluster to rush. I decided not to get Saboteur because at the beginning you now have 15 mines as your base. I don't think you're going to need to throw 17 mines at a target to kill it at the beginning. Maybe like Brutus and stuff. So this is something I'm really going to have to see if we need it. But other than that, it's just not that good when you consider crit multi-scaling and other stuff. So again, if you want it, two points. Don't take anything like you have to do it. You can modify anything you'd like. This is a template because nobody's played mines yet since this change. Uh, so moving on, we are now grabbing crit, uh, grabbing the life wheel since we've only got two here, and moving over to witch. The reason why we're moving over to witch is to grab the early mind over matter. Uh, you can see we picked up our first ascendancy, which is pyromaniac. Moving on to the next one at 41 to 51, we have ran into Templar. The reason why I pushed into Templar so early is because discipline training is a huge node. It's important to get that base life because as a shadow, you have no strength gain. Nothing here is giving us strength. Strength normally gives you flat life, so this kind of makes up for it. Also, Holy Dominion gives 12 all res. Very good for leveling. Moving into the next one, you can see we have started branching out on the right here now. So now we come over and we grab Blast Cascade, so crit. Haven't grabbed Doomcast yet because I'm branching down here uh, to get acrobatics, but of course, you know, at your own pace, take whatever you'd like. Uh, moving downward now, we grab Piercing Shots. This is probably when we're gonna try Icicle Mine and see how it feels. I think without this, it's probably not gonna feel too good. You can always just run a Pierce Gem. Now we're grabbing Acro into Phase Acro. This is also when you're probably doing your Cruel Lab. So actually, Cruel Lab's probably a little before that. So we got Bomb Specialist, which is nice. It gives us Area of Effect Scaling, which helps the Storm Blast Mine leveling if you decide to level with that. You also get the nice increased damage, detonation speed, and mine throwing speed. 71 to 81, you can see we're filling out the tree with life. Uh, haven't grabbed Doomcast yet because I am working on going into Clever Construction High Explosives. We do also come across here and grab Devotion. 81 to 90, we started filling in more crit, so we've got Annihilation along with Doomcast, also picking up Demolition Expert and High Explosives. 91 to 100, uh, filling out Melding here. Actually, what even did I do for this one? What is the main thing? Oh, picking up mana nodes. Starting to grab mana nodes and filling in crit multi on uh, excess points and get, grabbing Doomcast. Now, the 101 plus is a little bit of a respec and it's kind of for people who want to go a little bit more big, big brain. So I'll explain what we've done. We have slotted an intuitive leap over here. The intuitive leap is going to allow us to grab Mystic Bulwark, which gives us a little bit of block spell block, which I know we have acrobatics, but it's still free spell block considering it's paired with a 15% max mana node. And then you get mana regen per chance to block, which is nothing. It's like 5%. So you also get prodigal uh, perfection, which essentially is going to give us 50% uh, spell damage and 15% mana for one point. Very, very strong. Uh, also grabbing instability because it's a power charge. So that's basically 50% crit for one point and enigmatic defense, which would give us the 5% chance to block spell damage while wielding a staff, and 5% chance to block attack damage while wielding a staff, along with the spell damage while wielding a staff. And then we have Unholy Might, which I don't remember if Unholy Might works for spells or not, actually. Didn't even think about that part, so I'm not going to talk about that at the moment. So this is pretty nice for an intuitive leap spot. Also, uh, another thing to do is we've got a Tempered Spirit, which drops from the Temple of Atzawadl. What this does is, if you look at the top, it says attributes and radius, 90 dexterity. For every dexterity unallocated, which is 90, you get 15 flat mana, which is very, very strong. Uh, we don't need to have this, but if you're struggling with mana, basically because of the mana ratio, since we're gonna be using Mind Never Matter with a cloak, which is 40% conversion, you can get a lot of flat mana here. Okay, now that that's been talked about, um, your Uber Lab point is most likely going to be Born to the Shadows. Not sure why I didn't select that. Let me go ahead and talk about the gearing section. So in the gearing section, um, I have put a notes tab here. I would recommend reading it. Basically, what I've done is, is I've put gear that I'd recommend for you to use, but not this exact gear. It's basically showing the stats, except for the uniques. The uniques are good. So Tremorod, I talked about Tremorod getting a huge buff. 
where basically you don't have the reduced mind damage anymore. So it's a very, very strong weapon. And it's probably, I don't know how expensive it's going to be because right now it's very common to get. But in general, it's an easy weapon to get unless they change it. Um, in which case, you're probably, you can just dual wield anything you want. Get Ellie damage, crit, crit multi, spell crit chance. All of the basic stuff is going to go really, really well. So as for helmet, uh, I put here a shaped item because it gives us flat lightning dispels. It's not something that's required, but when you start taking into, into consideration flat damage scaled with your crit multi, you will be able to shock most monsters. So that's something nice. Also, our main stats are going to be life and mana. So Cloak of Defiance is going to be our go-to because it gives the huge amount of flat mana. It also gives that extra 10% conversion I was talking about, and it saves you one point on the tree because you can unspec Mind Over Matter. It also gives 1% of max mana regen per second. Percent max mana regen is very rare to find. So as for the gloves, I've decided to show some other alternatives. If you're not using fully shaped stuff or you're using more like budget gear, this is a lot easier to find. So here, if you look at, what is this, the gloves? The gloves are the murder mitts. Where are the murder mitts so I can show you here? Okay, so on the murder mitts, you can see I have a prefix for flat evasion and maximum life. If you don't wanna use flat evasion and max life, you can use flat ES and flat life, or you can just simply put a life roll. But if you do the life roll, you cannot get the hybrid life and mono roll. Now this is not shown on the bench, but you can craft a life and mono roll on a piece of gear that has a hybrid life roll on a piece of gear that has a maximum mono roll. You cannot put a flat life roll with a hybrid life roll for mana, but you can put a hybrid life roll with a hybrid life roll along with a, an actual mono roll. Now, to show you specifically, I'm just gonna boot up Path of Exile while we're talking here, because I wanted to test this in-game to make sure that I'm not giving you guys any misinformation. So on this piece of gear here that I have, that's an amulet, you can see that on the amulet, it has a prefix that I crafted for the flat mana and the flat life, while it already has a prefix for flat mana which is pretty cool. So that's another way of scaling huge amounts of flat mana. The other thing is, on these pair of gloves, I was showing exactly how I was talking about how in this instance, we don't have a mana roll because it's if you have a pure evasion piece, I don't think you have access to a mana roll. I think you need intelligence, which would require a blue, AKA the hybrid pieces as the ES evasion. So this has a hybrid evasion roll with the life and mana craft, and then you could theoretically get a mana roll. So that's pretty interesting as well. So going on and explaining, uh, for the boots, same thing, to, you know, movement speed is your priority. Um, ideally, we would probably look for a blue pearl amulet that's elder. Pretty rare to find, probably not gonna happen. You don't have to use a blue pearl, it's just for the mana regen. You can really just use any base you want. Um, but some good stats to look at would be crit multi, life, um, I have projectile pierce an additional target. That probably would be pretty cool. I don't think it's mandatory by any means, but it's just when you're clearing higher density maps, extra pierce does not hurt. Uh, also, because it's elder, you can roll physical mitigation, which would be nuts on any evasion build. Again, very difficult, but something cool to look after. And then the gain 13% of non-chaos damage is extra chaos damage is a multiplier. Again, a difficult roll, but something very awesome if you can get it. As for this ring, we're just using an opal. I decided to show some decent shaped mods you can use. Again, if you don't have these shaped mods, you can just go for the mana stacking and life stacking that I was explaining with the resistance. I don't have any resistance tied on any of this gear because resistance should be known by now. Like by the time you enter maps, your goal should be prioritizing 75 all res. And then as you're going higher into maps, you need to get like 119 if you want Ellie weakness cap, otherwise run like a wise oak or something that will fix it. So anyway, Resistance is not shown here. I, you guys can do it. I believe in you, okay? You can, you can build your characters. So, um, for rings here, I showed that you can get spell damage as a, as a uh, as shape roll. You can also get the lightning to spells. Um, you can also just do a regular life roll. And there is a hybrid, uh, well, I guess it's not really hybrid, but it's a monocraft that you can use uh, on the bench, which gives you the 6% of damage taken gained as mana over four seconds when hit. And that's hybrid with the mana roll, if you see how it's red and like light blue. 
So as for the other ring, I've got a Dream Fragments. Should be pretty easy to get. Synergizes very well with Pyromaniac since it gives the Cannot Be Frozen, Cannot Be Chilled, a ton of Mana Regen, ton of Max Mana. Very good. So Belts now have a new stat on them. Belts can now roll maximum mana, which is great. So we have more mana scaling that we can get. Also, if you have a Shape Belt, you can roll some pretty ridiculous mods, uh, which actually would by far contest the Stygian Belt, in my opinion. You can roll Mana Recovery Rate, which is a multiplier to your mana regen. And you can roll 30% reduced extra damage taken from Critical Strikes. TLDR, you take less damage from Critical Strikes, which is reducing damage by a ton, because when you get to end game, critical strikes can like one shot you delete your character basically from stacked monsters. So this is a very good defensive uh, belt as an example. So I also went ahead and showed some jewels that you can get. Uh, this is just showing a flat lightning crit multi life mana, very unrealistic to get, showing examples of stats you would look for. Again, that flat lightning helps you shock, which is a damage multiplier. Uh, for a non-Abyss Jewel, you can get something, this is like a, a much shittier one, but you can get increased damage, maximum mana, mind laying speed. Probably won't need to look for maximum mana on these because your mana is probably going to be super high. Um, and then another one would be a triple crit multi, maximum life. Of course, even just a single life roll with crit multi would be very good, but to show you the different types of rolls, you could get something like this. Now. This also shows the Intuitive Leap that's in here, and this shows the Tempered Spirit Viridian Jewel. So to talk about the defenses before I go any further, this is a character, if you guys remember my Fireball Mine guy, um, his HP looks a bit low, and that's basically because I have this really garbage helmet that you do not need anymore because they changed that you do not need to get the uh, remote mine on shaped helms because it's removed, because they completely reworked how mines work. So with mediocre life rolls, I'd say there's a 30 life roll here, there's a 90, this is good, 90-40, no strength roll, uh, this is a 67 life roll, this is an 84, this is a 42, this doesn't have life, this doesn't have life, Tremor Rod doesn't have life, the only jewel I have is a rolling flame, so zero life jewels, and this character's at 3.9k at 92. So with some basic jewels and a decent helmet, you're looking at 4.5k life. 4.5k life with a 40% conversion to your mana, and because you're playing an, a hybrid character, even though you're acrobatics, you have this bulk of energy shield. Most people dismiss it and say it's whatever. There is a, a, a benchcraft you can get that you can put on belts, actually. You can also do it on body armor, but if you're using a cloak, you're not going to have that. That gives you energy shield regenerated per second while a rare or unique enemy is nearby. It's 120 a second. It's pretty sick when you consider the fact that you've got HP regen from Pyromaniac, mana regen happening because you're playing a build that's going to center around sustain, and then you have an ES buffer that happens, and the ES will always be the first thing to get hit because Mind Over Matter protects your life, not your ES. The only thing that bypasses the ES is going to be a chaos damage hit. The other reason why we stack a lot of regen is it helps counter damage over time. That's something that's very, very, very awesome about Mind Over Matter, is if you can outscale the damage over time you take, you're doing a super good job. Okay, going into the next thing, I have went ahead and showed some skills. Now, for our staff, I put Bear Trap because we don't have the ability to show Icicle Mine. It's literally not here. Don't look at this here. I don't use Path of Building for numbers. I'm sorry if that's what you want, but that's just not me and I will not change. I like theory crafting my own ways. So um, the way I've set it up is basically showed support gems that you'd want to use. So Icicle Mine, Trap and Mine Damage. One thing about Trap and Mine Damage is it does reduce your mine throwing speed. So this is a question mark. If it makes the build feel worse because of the reduced throwing speed, we will not use it. We'll just use another thing instead, like Empower or one of the various multiplier gems that's in the game. There's also the new like Swift Assembly, I think, that gives you a chance to like basically repeat and throw multiple mines. But I don't think you want that for clearing because you want consistency. That would be more so for bossing. So we've also put in Control Destruction, a multiplier. It does reduce your crit chance, but with the new nodes on the tree, you're gonna have so much crit. And the fact that Icicle Mine makes itself crit more because of its aura effect is awesome. Cold pen, because we don't actually get much penetration from the tree because we're scaling crit multi. Minefield, um, minefield is completely different now. It basically makes you throw multiple mines at once um, with its own, it's basically very different now. So the only thing about minefield is 
the reason I would like to use it is because you throw minefield one time and it throws a bunch of them and then those explode. I don't know how minefield works with swift assembly if each one of the minefields roll a different one. I'm not really sure. Again, nobody really knows this unless we've gotten confirmation from GDG, but this would be more so for a clearing skill. And then hypothermia, which is going to be great um, because you've got the basically more cold damage and you've got the effect of chill. It's just good overall. I know it shows that you have some dex issues here. I haven't allocated it, but you can easily just put a dex node on the tree or just get a simple piece of dex anywhere. Um, as for the rest of the skills, I've got Pyroclasm Mine and a 5 link. Um, you don't really have to use Pyroclasm Mine, not 100% sure. You could just use Lightning Spire or anything else that you would want. Uh, but this is what we've got here. This is going to be with Immolate Combustion. Uh, I really like Immolate and Combustion. It's really awesome to use in my opinion. It's just kind of cool. I like scaling flat hits with Combustion. They're just a good synergy of support gems really. Um, and then Control Destruction Trap and Mine. As for auras, I've just put Clarity and Precision. They did buff Clarity now, so maybe you want to level higher level. Precision is just reserves 22 mana and gives you 40 crit. Really, really good for its price. Uh, and then there's the new Skitterbots, which summons two Skitterbots. One has a Frost Aura that chills. One has a Lightning Aura, which is 20% more damage to enemies. You can also support them with unbound ailments but that buffs the mana multiplier up and it already reserves like 35 percent and we're playing a mind over matter build so i don't really know if i want to do that maybe i'll use shit i don't remember what it's called i apologize there's a ring you can use that lets you basically reserve one thing for free maybe we'll just use that along with uh along with our uh dream fragments and then both of our rings are unique but that would hurt on void eye Void I? No, I think that's a plus five. I don't remember. I always forget the name of it. Anyway, though, going into Vol skills, I've got Rallying Cry, Increased Duration, Efficacy, Vol Grace. Big fan of Vol Grace. And Rallying Cry is overall just a nice damage increase and mono regen skill. And then for movement, I went ahead and tagged in Flame Dash with uh, Increased Duration, Efficacy, Arcane Surge. This is really just to have Arcane Surge up the whole time. Arcane Surge is a great buff. It's a multiplier to your spell damage and it buffs your mono regen by that maximum mono regen that's kind of rare. The other thing is there is a smoke mine setup that I would put in as well. Uh, smoke mine now gains the benefit of mine duration. So smoke mine should last a really long time. Uh, I just don't really know much about it yet since we have to try it because it's brand new. The only other thing left to really talk about, uh, your bandits are gonna be either kill all or help Alira. I'm probably just gonna kill them all for the extra skill points since the new mine nodes are just delicious. Like. Successive detonations is 100% crit chance and 40 crit multi. Blast Cascade is, well, Blast Cascade's always been here, but it's just good. There's just so much crit multi now on the tree uh, for mine specifically. So I want to go ahead and talk about the notes. So I'm only, really only going to talk about this section right here for the anoints. So anoints now means you can take three oils from the league and add it onto an amulet to get any single one of the uh i forgot what they're called but this basically not a keystone but a baby like a baby stone so you can get pretty much any one of them and you can see the result before you actually combine it so you, it's you can basically you know mess around and guarantee the one you want assuming you have the oils so in here i put a list of a couple of anointed ones that would be pretty good and i want to talk about them and then we're done so number one aspect of stone and soul of steel so these are these are actually like the tier ones right here Aspect of Stone would give us a 20% chance to avoid physical damage from hits. So we have our Dodge, which is going to be over 50 with Volgrace, it's capped. You have your Evasion, may not be very good, maybe around 7k, maybe 20k if you use a Jade Flask, maybe a bit more, but it's whatever. Then you have the Avoid, which should be a separate roll because it's not Evasion and it's not Dodge. Maybe I'm incorrect, but it says Avoid. Uh, the other cool thing about this is this actually works against spells like Bladefall and Ethereal Knives, which a couple of mobs actually do. Um, so this is super good defensively. The other one would be Soul of Steel, mainly because of the plus one max res and the 5% physical reduction. Physical reduction is rare to come by on evasion builds. The other one that I didn't put in tier one is Transcendence because it just reduces a flat amount, a large amount of physical damage. Um, but I don't think it's as good as the other two for what we're doing specifically. The other ones, I'm not really going to talk about too much, but I did show them in here, which is the Transcendence, Battle Ruse, Constitution, Golem's Blood, Barbarism, Prodigal Perfection. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much about it. 
Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves like I did. If I left any critical information out, I will update it in the comments. I will have a pinned comment down at the bottom. So anything I miss that's really important, or if I think of some early leveling uniques, I'll post it just in there. I have been delaying this video a bit because I've been trying to compile the information, but I feel like I never have all of it. So I just had to get it out before the league start because otherwise it would be like way too late, right? Um, and yeah, the other thing is, the last one is, there was another build that I was going to talk about, but like I said, I'm only going to do one. I just want to give you a sneak peek of what my next build will most likely be. So if I hit that back button, I'm probably going to be playing a Detonate Dead Necromancer as my second character to get the good old Fire Pro um, Even if it's not a full Fire Pro Lift build because it's crit right now, it should be pretty nice. We go Mistress of Sacrifice and get Block Cap with a Staff. Uh, also mind the matter because of this new node essence of glutton, but that's another character and we're not going to be talking about that now So hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself Please feel free to comment down below and remember you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox I'll try to do a nice lengthy girthy stream and get some video uploads while we're actually playing day one of league start Anyway, take care. Have a wonderful time and I'll see you guys all tomorrow